Well, in the last segment I did, I talked about the prayer of faith, James 5, 14 through 16, about the prayer of faith needs to be looked at by the elders who are praying for the sick person. And I just uh, don't feel like the Lord wants me to leave it where I left it. I think he wants me to share some more on that. So I'm going to go trusting that uh, what he's put into my heart is what I'm supposed to say. Um, <clears throat> first and foremost, let's just let's throw this out here uh, so that we, we have a foundation in which to build from. In America and the body of Christ, there's basically two, well, maybe three categories of people and how they view healing, physical healing. Okay? There is the ultra, what I like to call the ultra Pentecostal uh, group who wants to convince the whole world that physical healing is in the atonement. And when you ask any of those ardent believers uh, if they would pray for you, they'll usually be quick to say, Ock, ock, you've already been healed 2,000 years ago. You just got to believe it. Receive it, brother. Receive it, sister. There, that's it. They want to quick get that in there. I'm so sick and tired of hearing that. I don't, I don't want them to even pray for me anymore. Though God may use them to affect something very positive in my life. Because it's a miss understanding of what God has tried to communicate to us. In the Isaiah account, in the, the, the 1 Peter account, by his stripes you're healed, he's talking about spiritual healing, spiritual wholeness. And I won't get into all of the ramifications of spiritual wholeness. Nevertheless, I believe that God wants us to be healed more than we understand. And so you, or believe, but, and there's some buts here, and that's what I'm going to be talking about. But let's get to the other extreme of the body of Christ. Well, Lord, we know you can heal, and if it's your will for this individual or for me to be healed, I'm going to, I'm going to believe they're going to heal me. Well, there's no prayer of faith in that. There's no faith. S Satan looks at that and says, oh man, come on, you can do better than that, can't you? You ain't going to get no healing out of, well, if it's your will, Lord. Okay, well, if it's your will that I be saved, then save me. But if it's not, I know that there's no way that I'll ever get saved. It's kind of like saying the same thing. It, it, and the devil's laughing when we're in both extremes because it's not getting the job done. Not a whole lot of folks are getting healed of serious sicknesses and diseases that they're hoping God will heal them from. Now getting back to the James 5, 14 through 16, I believe a, a huge reason, this just didn't start the last day or two praying about this, this has been going on in my spirit for years. I've been asking God for years, why aren't we able to see supernatural manifestations when people call for elders to pray for them regarding serious sicknesses and diseases such as cancers and blood diseases, rare this, things that people are probably going to end up dying from, you know, if God doesn't supernaturally intervene. And in asking God uh, about all this confusion that goes on about how to get God to physically heal us, um, I believe we're missing probably the most important element in the battle that rages between healings and his atonement, and if it's your will, Lord, heal somebody. Okay? I believe we're missing what God wants us to be doing first and foremost, and that's going to James chapter 1, verses 5 and 6, which says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. He gives it to us liberally. But... Make sure you believe, because if you don't, that he's going to give you the wisdom. You're going to be wrestling around with doubt, because the devil will make sure you're, you're, you know, you're know, you going to be injected with doubt. And so, therefore, don't think God's going to give you anything. Which is kind of like, well, why should I ask in the first place? You ever been there? I have. <laughs> you know? 
If it's that complicated, why even ask God for wisdom? No, God wants us asking him for wisdom. And I believe when we are sick, we're in pain, we're hurting, whether it's physical pain, physical sickness, and or mental sickness, depression. Um, depression being high on the list. Um, we need to go to God and say, God, I'm asking that you give me understanding of what I'm to do to reverse what's going on in my body so that I can move toward healing, physical or emotional or both healing. And don't let it be a one-time thing. Continue to just humbly go to God. God, please give me wisdom. I'm trusting you for wisdom. I'm asking and trusting you for wisdom in what I should do about my situation. Give me spiritual ears to hear. Now, if you have elders in your local church fellowship who understand what I'm talking about, you probably got some of the best elders God could give you. Okay? Because in this day and age, things have changed from 2,000 years ago when James got written. They didn't have all the medical options and the... Uh, you know, the, the brain-dead medical doctors out there that refuse to see anything other than what they've been given to teach in med school and what they tell each other to, 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 to engage in. Sorry to say it, but uh, our medical profession, the, the, the doctors that give us advice on what we're to do, sometimes are vessels of the devil. They don't know it. They mean well, but... They, they, they're looking through a set of glasses that doesn't always address the issue. So we need to go to God, ask Him for wisdom when we get advice from a doctor or doctors. It's that critical. What kind of a doctor we go to sometimes is so critical. And I guarantee you, most medical doctors in America doesn't want you to go to a nutritionist. No, 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 no. The more patients, potential patients that go to nutritionists, the less money we'll have coming into our uh, coffers, okay? And so the whole thing is geared to profit. Profit, profit, profit. Money, 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 money. Okay? And so I believe God is saying, I'll tell you why so many people are not getting healed when they go to the elders of the church and have prayer uh, for their sickness or individuals praying whether I'm praying and trusting and or you know somebody else I'm asking to pray and trust with me because we're refusing to look at something that they didn't have thrown at them back in the days that James wrote uh, anybody sick let them call for the elders of the church today we have so many contaminants destroying our health we have so many things that we are putting into our bodies for years, for many of us, that have torn our health down, have destroyed our immune systems, have got us all whacked out of shape to where these bodies can't do what God designed them to do. Okay? And we need to be hearing God say, I, I will heal you, I want to heal you. You, know, you go in, I don't, I don't go to doctor and say well doc is it your will that I get healed or not he'd laugh at you and say what <laughs> I'm here to help people well I believe God is the same person I believe he wants to help us more than doctors so I don't go to God and question whether he wants me to be healed or not that's just a given he wants his best for me he's a good God he doesn't want me in pain he doesn't want me sick so I go in, I don't have to, and I don't have to get that from by the stripes you're healed, it's in the atonement, or any place else, in one Peter account. No, 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 that's just common sense. Just use some common sense in all this. So, okay, God, I'm asking you for healing. I'm trusting you for it, prayer faith. Whether there's any faith connected or not, but nothing wrong with it. I'm asking for a healing. I'm trusting you for it. Now show me what I need to know and help me do what I got to do to affect that healing. I think it's the wisest way to go about healing when we're seeking God for healing. I really do. You may feel differently, but we can agree to disagree. Um, so, 
I think that's all I'm going to say about it. It isn't simply a matter of praying a prayer of faith or a prayer of just asking or any other type of prayer. We can even determine to fast 40 days if we're able to make it and still maybe never see God heal us. And here's the reason. If we are putting contaminants into our bodies that are tearing down our health, tearing down our immune systems, our heart functions, all of the things that need to work together to maintain a healthy body. If we're tearing them down from the things that we eat and or drink and with no lack of exercise, and the more we hurt, the more we don't want to exercise, I realize, um, God's not doing us any favor by supernaturally healing us when we only go back and keep doing the same thing. Or we're constantly going to be needing more healing for the very same issue. Because we haven't got to the source of what's causing the sickness and or disease. Now some sicknesses, some diseases have gotten such a stronghold in our bodies that Maybe God's just going to say, I'm going to let you come to heaven. Um, it's too far gone. Besides that, I want you up here. You're going to enjoy it in heaven. Don't get so hung up on a physical healing that you're missing out on what eternity has for you. I think sometimes God is just overruling healing as period to take us to glory to where on the other side we say, oh God, thank you for not healing me. Thank you so much. I didn't realize how good heaven was. But, um, you know, by his stripes you're healed. Them folks, they don't want to see it that way. No, 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 no. You got to believe it's already healed 2,000 years ago. Just believe it, confess it, say it, blah, blah, blah. got all the formula. I think it makes God want to puke at times, so to speak. So my friend, um, I'm going to share some more. I have beat the drum on juicing in some of my other videos. I beat the drum on fasting, detoxing, cleansing the crap out of our system by flushing it out. Uh, you know, you cleanse a clogged sewage pipe by routing it out and getting the stuff that's built up in there it's like there's stuff that builds up on our bodies especially the older we get and um, and uh, so it needs to be cleansed out we need to get we have more impurities in our blood than we can fathom most of us and so fasting and or quality detoxing can go a long way in cleansing stuff out of our blood out of our joints um, and uh, out of our tissue and we can get a uh, healing sometimes we can reverse cancers we can reverse terminal sicknesses and disease by simply cleansing our bodies to the degree that the immune systems can get strong again in us and uh, the immune system can go back and do what it's designed to do um, there's so much we don't know. I know many nutritionists understand what I'm talking about. And they so wish that the medical profession would work hand in hand with them. Because so much of our healing is not going to come from more medicines, more prescriptions given by medical doctors. They'll keep prescribing till the cows die and can't come back to the barn. Uh, they're making money as long as you pay for those prescriptions you keep coming back and say doc this ain't working tell me something else I can try that's an endless thing and they feel that's their job but you know what keep putting money in their wallet doesn't it and um, so most of the wisdom that any Christian needs to help them get answers from God about how to get wisdom and direction to have better health is on the internet. I like to call it Dr. Google because Google dominates until something changes. Go to Dr. Google. 
But in going to Dr. Google, it's like looking up any topic, uh, any spiritual topic. You got myriads of people saying myriads of things about a given thing, and you can walk away if you don't, if you haven't been at this very long and get wrong advice. Boy, you get into healing, and you, you, you know, you. Let's take the topic of uric acid. Uric acid is responsible for more arthritis and rheumatism, especially in older people, than any other issue. And if you do a search on uric acid, how to get rid of uric acid in the system, you get to the medical doctors and they're going to give you all kinds of medicines that are available and you can try this and you can back off of some of the foods you're taking and drink less and less of this and you know if that don't work be sure and consult your doctor so your doctor can give you something else to try and you will never find I mean pages and pages of quality medical websites quality medical professionals will never tell you try some high doses just appear lemon juice it's not there I've studied it I've read it rare will you find it okay I mean pure lemon juice high amounts of it taken periodically or to do a detox flush of your system can do more to rid your body of physical pain especially if it's arthritic related pain than about anything else you can do. There are other compounds, other things that also work, but pure old lemon juice, squeeze of lemon juice, sweetened with honey if you need a sweetener, okay, not refined sugar, not artificial sweeteners, though any is better than none because drinking sour lemon juice is tough. I prefer honey. I even, at times when I'm drinking a lot of fresh lemon juice to cleanse my body and, um, I drink a lot of uh, honey in my coffee when I drink coffee so I'm getting a lot of the nutrition uh, you know in, in from the honey in my coffee so I like I like punch and so when I'm taking higher doses of uh, raw lemon juice to cleanse my system out cleanse cleanse organs and the blood and the joints and whatever else needs to be cleansed, I like to add some plain old Seven uh, Up to it, you know, and and that adds to the sugar component, and it tastes it tastes like I'm drinking punch at a at a wedding, you know. I like that the amount of sugar. I know a lot of people are gonna be down on sugar, but I'm looking at the uh, ingredients. If I drink enough lemon juice, um, it'll far override any of the detriments that in the fructose within the. Uh, seven up okay and you know then if you go to the uh, holistic or the, the nutrition websites so many of them are trying to get you to buy something from them they're there to get you to buy something from them somehow some way they're touting some snake oil formula that may help may not Look, anybody who understands the benefits of detoxing and or fasting detoxing that's been around who studied will tell you raw lemon juice is probably the very best and it's the cheapest. There's so much quality nutrition your body may be starving for in fresh squeezed lemons. Okay, and it is one of the best known inflammation fighters there is because so much of inflammation is a backup of uric acid and they're finding some other ingredients okay so they're still trying to find out what is what it is about these acids that's building up uh, in key places in our bodies and breaking down organs to where we're catching these sicknesses and diseases potentially so that's just one thing I want to get off of that, but uh, I, I, I'm convinced that drinking a ton of raw lemon juice, especially when we're having high amounts of bone pain, muscle pain, is one of the best things that we can do. Probably taking it periodically, looking at that, but at least, my friend, do a detailed study on the benefits of drinking raw 
lemon juice. There's other quality juices for different issues, but raw lemon juice is one of the best things. You need to have that information, my friend. If you really are serious about him, wanting God to keep you from getting sick and or if you're sick and or diseased, to get delivered from it. Again, let me end this. If anybody thinks I'm against healing, they're wrong. I believe God wants us healed, spirit, soul, and body. I believe that. Yet with sin that has entered the world, we have young people inheriting sicknesses and diseases. We have so many things that are dumped on our young children. And sometimes there is no magic potion that God would give us. And they're going to die with it. I have to live with it. But if we, the parents or overseers of those children, can look at quality food and drinks to give those children, in addition to listening to the counsel of medical doctors, as is available, just asking God to give you spiritual ears to hear and to discern what is good for our situation. That's what I believe God is saying about all of this. It isn't just physical healing. It has to do with everything that we are uh, a part of in this life. Okay? You can go to churches, local church fellowships, and there is excellent teaching. Excellent, excellent teaching, excellent ministry going on, and yet there can be hard, fast doctrinal positions that are doing people more harm than good. It is the condition of the body of Christ on planet Earth. So we need wisdom in what we're going to believe when somebody's trying to tell us this is the way it is. Trust me, this is biblical truth. This is accurate revelation of truth. Uh, no, not because you said it. I want to go to God and I'm going to ask for wisdom in what I'm to believe about it. And I'm going to patiently trust. I believe God wants us praying the prayer of faith 100% of the time when it comes to what do I believe about the Bible. I believe he wants us to pray the prayer of faith 100% of the time. And he will back it up if we're cautious, patient with him. God, what do I believe about doctrinal issues in the Bible? What do I believe when somebody tells me I'm supposed to believe what they're preaching or teaching to me? Just like me right now. If you're wise, you'll go to God and you'll ask him for wisdom and trust him for wisdom as to whether I know what I'm talking about, maybe a little bit, maybe not at all. Don't listen to that guy ever again. Or you know what? This guy... Probably has got something, you know, that will help me look more into um, this issue of uh, healing. That's the Holy Spirit's job. He is truth as Jesus is truth. He will lead us into all truth. And he wants us to know more than anybody else on planet Earth, including all of the doctors out there. They'll praise God for doctors. You know, when my car doesn't work and I can't fix it, I'm not going to take it to the elders and ask them to pray the prayer of faith so it'll work again. God's saying, don't waste their time, don't waste your time. Take it to a mechanic, a trusted mechanic. Let him diagnose it, let him fix it. Okay? Um... Uh, or go ride your bicycle, take your pick. So why do we think that just going to one source is the only source when it comes to healing? And I really, you know, there's, I praise God for good medical doctors. But the medical profession in America, especially the pharmaceuticals, pharmaceutical companies have so much of a stranglehold on our economy. They do. It's just the way it is. And bless God for the medicines that help people. But I'll tell you one thing, never forget, they're there to make money. Pharmaceutical companies exist to make money. And they are in bed with the medical profession. Because if they don't have doctors prescribing their pharmaceuticals, their drugs, their medicine, they don't stay in business very long. So they're both in bed with each other. Don't forget that. 
And it's fine to take the medicine when God says take it. But if you are really clearly hearing him say that, I'd back off. If it's a matter of life and death, that's something else, okay? It's a very complicated topic. Um, but I'm just sharing what I felt God wanted me to say about it. So, um, thanks for hearing me out. God bless you.